Hello, teacher. Eileen. Evening, Lynn. Good evening, teacher. Okay, for today, Lynn, let us have the intermediate. Okay, I will share it to you now. We have here about money. Let us have unit seven. We're talking about money. Money, money, money. Okay, now we lean. Please try to answer this. Have you ever found in money that was not yours? And what did you do with it? Okay. I have found money. In the yes, I have ever I have found any my found money that was not mine. Okay, and what did you do with it? Uh when I find in when I go to school and I'm fine in the school. So I give it to I I give it to the the teacher and he will give it back and he will he will give it back to the person who have lost oh. the money. Wow, very good. So you will gonna give the money to the person who is really the owner of the money. Okay. So that's very good. It's very act. Okay, it's an act of kindness and honesty. Okay. So whenever you see something, it is good that you have to return it to the owner, to the real owner. Okay. Okay. Do not keep it and buy it something which is not really or not actually yours okay so we have here check the bidding of the verbs below we have afford be short of it means not having enough money of something charge to us an amount for goods or services like i will charge you for the job that i've done okay. Another means to give somebody their money back especially because they have too much or because they are not satisfied with something they bought it's own to have something that belongs to you waste to use more or something that is necessary or useful save up it means to keep money so that you can buy something in the future like you save up because uh, I need to buy a new motorbike in the future. Run out, it means to use up or finish supply of sometimes. You run out of money, run out of, the, run out of cost. Pay for it to make a payment. I will pay for my tuition fee. It means I will make payment. Okay, so here, find four pairs of verbs in the opposite meanings lean. You can write here or in the chat box. Okay.
Okay, please find four pairs of opposites. Okay, first we have Kibaro and Land. Kibaro and Land. Okay, next. Wait, 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 I understand. Oh. oh, I understand now. now ah, okay. Understand. Okay, okay. <laughs> The example is borrow and land. Okay, opposite lead, opposite.
Okay. Okay. Borrow land. Okay. Buy and sell. We are buy, sell, buy. Okay. Buy and sell. Correct. Get refund. Give refund. Get or get refund. Saved and spend. Save and spend or save and waste. Uh, waste. Okay, the same. Okay, very good. So these are the four opposite meanings. Okay, we have the word check. It's a printed form that you can write on and sign as a way of paying for something instead of using money. Check. Contain, it means there's something inside. Agency, it's a business or an organization that provides a particular service, especially when representing other businesses. Advertise, it means you will gonna have to advertise it. Okay, in the TV. Okay, in the TV. If in the TV, we can see you in the TV doing advertisements. A donate it means to give money. It means you give a money to somebody or something. Collect it means raise. Quasi it means to concern about having things exactly as you want. Offer it means to say that you are willing to give. Overcharge it means make somebody pay too much. Okay, afford, it means to have money to be able to buy or do something. Persuade, to make somebody do something by giving them good reasons for doing it. It means you persuade or you will gonna give reasons for doing it. Okay, so this is the life story about Glenn James. What did he do, Lynn? Okay, after that, Answer the questions. What did he do? Lesson 7C. Exercises 2 and 4. Glenn James didn't expect to get a reward for what he did. He thought he was just doing the right thing. But because of his honesty, this poor homeless man from Boston now has enough money to live comfortably. Last February, James, who has been homeless for five years, was in a shopping centre when he noticed a bag on the floor. Nobody was near it. He picked it up and looked inside. He couldn't believe his eyes. There was $42,000 in cash and traveller's checks in the bag. James didn't think for one moment of keeping the money. He left the shopping centre and stopped a police car that was passing and handed the bag to them. The bag also contained passports and tickets, and the police soon found the owner of the bag, a Chinese student who was visiting Boston. When Ethan Whittington, a manager at an advertising agency, heard the story on the news, he decided to help James. He wanted to make life better for him. 26-year-old Whittington set up a website where people could donate money to James, he hoped to raise $50,000, but soon there was over $100,000. James is surprised and delighted at receiving the money. I was only doing the right thing, he says. Now I'll have enough money to open a bank account. Okay, what did Glenn James do? Uh, he found a yeah. he found a a huge bag of uh very a lot of money and not he is not not uh, uses on his own on his own uh, but and he gave it to the police. 
to find the owner of the bag. Okay, very good. So, Glenn James, find or found a bag. Okay, it's the owner is a Chinese student. Okay, so after he sold that one, he tried to contact the he contact the students and then so the students was so amazed that the bag was being returned by Glenn James. Okay. Very good. Okay. Now you have here you read the summary of let us skip this one because it's quite complicated. Okay, this one. Listen to the story again and complete the summary in the task four. Lesson 7C, exercises 2 and 4. Sample has been homeless. Glenn James didn't expect to get a reward for what he did. He thought he was just doing the right thing. But because of his honesty, this poor homeless man from Boston now has enough money to live comfortably. Last February, James, who has been homeless for five years, was in a shopping centre when he noticed a bag on the floor. Nobody was near it. He picked it up and looked inside. He couldn't believe his eyes. There was $42,000 in cash and traveler's checks in the bag. James didn't think for one moment of keeping the money. He left the shopping center and stopped a police car that was passing and handed the bag to them. The bag also contained passports and tickets, and the police soon found the owner of the bag a Chinese student who was visiting Boston. When Ethan Whittington, a manager at an advertising agency, heard the story on the news, he decided to help James. He wanted to make life better for him. 26-year-old Whittington set up a website where people could donate money to James. He hoped to raise $50,000, but soon there was over $100,000. James is surprised and delighted at receiving the money. I was only doing the right thing, he says. Now I'll have enough money to open a bank account. Okay, so one more. Lesson 7C, exercises 2 Please and 4. Please double check your answer. Glenn James didn't expect to get a reward for what he did. He thought he was just doing the right thing. But because of his honesty, this poor homeless man from Boston now has enough money to live comfortably. Last February, James, who has been homeless for five years, was in a shopping centre when he noticed a bag on the floor. Nobody was near it. He picked it up and looked inside. He couldn't believe his eyes. There was $42,000 in cash and traveler's checks in the bag. James didn't think for one moment of keeping the money. He left the shopping center and stopped a police car that was passing and handed the bag to them. The bag also contained passports and tickets, and the police soon found the owner of the bag, a Chinese student who was visiting Boston. When Ethan Whittington, a manager at an advertising agency, heard the story on the news, he decided to help James. He wanted to make life better for him. 26-year-old Whittington set up a website where people could donate money to James. He hoped to raise $50,000, but soon there was over $100,000. James is surprised and delighted at receiving the money. I was only doing the right thing, he says. Now I'll have enough money to open a bank account. Okay, so we yeah. have here number two. Glenn James lived in Boston, but for the past five years, he has been homeless. Okay, it means he has no house. Last February, he found a bag in a shopping center. 
Inside the bag, there were a lot of money, of course, like 42,000 US dollar. Okay. He reported it to the police. Very good. And they managed to find the owner of the bag, who was a Chinese student. Okay. His name is Ethan Wellington. He is the one, or he is the one who will give the money. After he heard the news, they immediately decided to help Glenn up sitting the website or the web and asking people to help to donate money. He managed to raise 100000 for Glenn. Okay, because of Glenn and his team, Glenn were able to receive this very big amount of money. Okay. So please try to answer this one. Sure, I cannot. Okay, wait me now. Lesson 7C Exercises 8 and 9. 1. I was in town last week looking for a present for my friend Amy. I looked in loads of shops, but I couldn't find anything. Finally, I went into a clothes store. It's not a good idea to buy clothes for people unless you know them really well. But I found a nice scarf. Amy is quite fussy, but hopefully she'll like it. I'll keep the receipt in case she wants to take it back. Anyway, I was about to pay for it when I dropped some coins on the floor. And as I picked them up, I noticed a £10 note on the floor. I handed it to the shop assistant, and she said she'd keep it in case anyone came back for it. 2. I'm always short of money. 
I don't get much pocket money, and I seem to spend it as fast as I get it. I don't think I waste money on things I don't need. In fact, I prefer to spend money on other people, like my family and friends. Anyway, I ran out of money last week, and I really need some for a cinema ticket. My friend Sam offered to lend me some money, but I already owe him money, so I asked my sister Leia. She said she was short of money herself, so she said no. I guess I'll have to borrow from Sam again. Three. I bought a baseball cap yesterday, but as I was leaving the checkout, I noticed that the shop assistant had overcharged me. I was paying by card, and I didn't check the amount before I entered my pin. Anyway, I'm sure the price ticket on the shelf was ten pounds. But she charged me fifteen pounds. I complained and tried to get my money back. She refused. I said you have to sell things for the price that is marked on the shelf. She said I was wrong and I got a bit cross, but it didn't help. She said you can have all the money back, but I can't give it to you for ten pounds. I bought it anyway, but I'm glad I did. Although it's quite expensive, it's a brilliant cap. Four. It's always a mistake to buy things in a sale. Okay, so everything is much cheaper, but I always ask myself, would you buy it if it was full price? If the answer is no, probably not, then I don't buy it in the sale. In fact, I prefer to buy really good quality clothes. And I don't mind paying a bit more for them. There's a lovely leather jacket that I want, but it costs so much. I only get six pounds a week from my parents, so I'll have to wait a while before I can afford it. I'm sure Dad would lend me the money if I asked him, but I'd rather not. Five. Last month I borrowed some money from my parents to buy a necklace. I don't normally spend a lot of money on myself, and I don't normally borrow money either. But I fell in love with this necklace, although it costs far more than I normally spend on jewelry. Even my mum thought it was expensive. She said, "Why don't you save up for it?" and tried to persuade me not to buy it. But I didn't listen. I bought it anyway. A week after I bought it, I decided I didn't like it after all. So I decided to return it to the shop, but I couldn't find the receipt. The sales assistant refused to give me a refund or to exchange it, which is fair enough. I've wasted a lot of money, and I owe my mum sixty pounds. Do you can I this again?
teacher, can I listen again? Okay, please. Yeah. Lesson 7C. Exercises 8 and 9. 1. I was in town last week looking for a present for my friend Amy. I looked in loads of shops, but I couldn't find anything. Finally, I went into a clothes store. It's not a good idea to buy clothes for people unless you know them really well, but I found a nice scarf. Amy is quite fussy, but hopefully she'll like it. I'll keep the receipt in case she wants to take it back. Anyway, I was about to pay for it when I dropped some coins on the floor. And as I picked them up, I noticed a £10 note on the floor. I handed it to the shop assistant, and she said she'd keep it in case anyone came back for it. 2. I'm always short of money. I don't get much pocket money, and I seem to spend it as fast as I get it. I don't think I waste money on things I don't need. In fact, I prefer to spend money on other people, like my family and friends. Anyway, I ran out of money last week, and I really need some for a cinema ticket. My friend Sam offered to lend me some money, but I already owe him money, so I asked my sister Leia. She said she was short of money herself, so she said no. I guess I'll have to borrow from Sam again. 3. I bought a baseball cap yesterday, but as I was leaving the checkout, I noticed that the shop assistant had overcharged me. I was paying by card, and I didn't check the amount before I entered my PIN. Anyway, I'm sure the price ticket on the shelf was £10, but she charged me £15. I complained and tried to get my money back. She refused. I said, you have to sell things for the price that is marked on the shelf. She said I was wrong, and I got a bit cross, but it didn't help. She said, you can have all the money back, but I can't give it to you for £10. I bought it anyway, but I'm glad I did. Although it's quite expensive, it's a brilliant cap. 4. It's always a mistake to buy things in a sale. OK, so everything is much cheaper, but I always ask myself, would you buy it if it was full price? If the answer is no, probably not, then I don't buy it in the sale. In fact, I prefer to buy really good quality clothes, and I don't mind paying a bit more for them. There's a lovely leather jacket that I want, but it costs so much. I only get £6 a week from my parents, so I'll have to wait a while before I can afford it. I'm sure Dad would lend me the money if I asked him, but I'd rather not. 5. Last month I borrowed some money from my parents to buy a necklace. I don't normally spend a lot of money on myself, and I don't normally borrow money either. But I fell in love with this necklace, although it costs far more than I normally spend on jewellery. Even my mum thought it was expensive. She said, why don't you save up for it? And tried to persuade me not to buy it. But I didn't listen. I bought it anyway. A week after I bought it, I decided I didn't like it after all. So I decided to return it to the shop. But I couldn't find the receipt. The sales assistant refused to give me a refund or to exchange it, which is fair enough. I've wasted a lot of money, and I owe my mum £60.
So where did the boy buy the present? Clothes store. Who does the girl like to spend on? Family and friends. Okay, buy credit card. How much money does the girl receive? Six dollar, a uh, six pounds, and a week after she bought it. Okay. So Lynn, we don't have enough time, so teacher Ann will say goodbye. And hopefully, Lynn, if I can, if you have free time on the, tomorrow or Saturday, that would be okay. Okay. Um, yes, teacher. Thank you so much, Lynn. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.